circles that exist outside of me and that travel around around my shoulders. One of them is going to be smaller and closer to me, while the other one starts actually further out away from me. So you can envision that there's these two circles. There's one down here and there's one here. And as they go back, they start to come together. And they come together at the very top. So I have one circle that's much steeper, and I have one circle that's out a little bit more horizontal. Okay? And it goes around and much wider. Now these two circles visually are going to meet at some point at the very top of my swing. Now what these two circles represent, what those two circles represent is one, the steeper one, is my hands. Whereas the more rounded one, the one further that starts further out away from me, is actually the club head. And these two do not meet until the very, very top, when I reach the top of my back swing. A lot of people have problems with taking the club back. They immediately try to get both the hands and the club on the same circle at the same time. You actually want to delay that circle so that when I'm looking at it, the club stays on the outside track while my hands stay on the inside track. That's just visually they're going to do that. Now from your angle, they might actually appear that from here, they're both on the same plane. But my eyes are in front of where the club is, which actually places that arc of the club head slightly more outside of where my hands are. It is not until the very top before my hands meet where the club head was. So when you're looking, you're going to see those two arcs happen. The hands are going much more upright, and the club head is traveling much more around. But they don't meet until the very top. This here is a good visual reference down on the ground. This slightly angled straight edge, whatever it is, <coughs> can be a club. I recommend you, you can do this any time out on the driving range. In essence, what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep the hand visually inside of this straight edge while the club head travels on the outside. And the club itself is going to feel the shaft like it's on a rail directly in line with whatever straight edge we have down here. So when I take it back, we have this club traveling straight back on that rail. Something I talk about all the time when we're starting the club away is that you want to start the club back and let the momentum take you all the way to the top. In the anatomy of a swing, what we actually have is a certain amount of force that's being applied halfway during the swing's path. After that halfway point, the rest of it is momentum. Now, if we take if we take a pendulum-like motion back and forth here, we can see that it is mostly equal on both sides. However, I am applying force to the club, and the gravity is applying force to the club from this point to this point. After that, all of, it, all of the momentum is released to go forward. Now, when we're applying this to our backswing, what we're actually doing is we're going to apply all of the force to the halfway point during our backswing. And then we're going to let the momentum carry us up to the top. Now, a lot of us are in the habit, and I'm definitely a person who has this problem. Once we get to that halfway point, we have a tendency to try to take it even further. And we actually start lifting the club up to the top instead of letting the momentum that we created take it to the top. Now, this sets us up for a bad transition. Because we have must, if we're still adding force to the club's motion to go back, we have to stop that motion, we have to stop that force in order to continue it to go forward. So what we must do is we must stop our force here and let the momentum take us to the top. Now, once I have done that and I have stopped forcing, notice that I have a tremendous amount of time for me to reset my force and get my muscles geared up and ready to go to move forward. I actually have a better chance of creating thrust by letting the thrust go back here and let the momentum go here 
by the time that my club has reached the top, my body is, is really coiled and ready to go because it's been waiting for half of the backswing to start to move forward. There's quite a bit of quickness and anticipation that can happen with that. If I were to move this club back and forth, notice that all parts are moving together at the same rate. The club head is moving back and forth at the same rotation per minute around the axis as the grip is. That is to say, the grip is not moving forward as the club head is moving backward. That would be what we consider a leverage action. Instead of using the whole club moving back and forth, you would be using only the club head. And this would now have a new axis point. Okay? Notice that if the club head is moving back while the club grip is moving forward, we now have a new axis. Okay? We must have in a swing all parts of the swing moving back and forward. This is what generates speed. If I do not have all parts of these things going back and forth together, then I will actually decrease speed, much as if I do this. Notice there is very little club head speed that's produced when we do that. So what I must actually do is make sure that all things are moving back and forward together and that we aren't trying to make some sort of leverage on the club first before we begin our swing. That helps us produce momentum to go back and then finish our back swing. If I try to produce leverage first, I would have to lift the entire way. If I do that, I have to stop that momentum up at the top because I cannot let it continue to go forward. There is no momentum. Once I have done this and I set that, there is little momentum to carry me all the way up to the top. Now I must coil myself and make a very quick rapid transition from a, from a going back, halt, and go forward. Whereas if I have a swing that allows the momentum to go back and then carry us to the top, then I have a lot of pause in order to get my body set and prepared to move forward. And there's going to be just the same amount of coil as if I had forced that same production. What we actually want to do is have the club, the hands, always out in front of us. Notice that I don't have the club back here. This would be a leverage action. And now I no longer have the connection of my hands and the swing. I have some sort of rotation. So what I want to do is maintain this relationship going back. Notice that the club is staying out in front of my shoulders, always out in front of my shoulder turn, as opposed to trying to get around and back behind, which is very common for, for swingers.